Hello kids, it's Mr. Trevor from Mesa County Libraries and it's time for another episode of Explore Mesa County where we get to go around town and check out some really cool, super neat, awesome places. And today I'm really excited because we're at Eureka Science Museum. We're outside now, but I think we should go inside. Do you want to go inside with me? Come on, let's go. Well, here we are inside Eureka Science Museum, and I just got to meet the executive director, Jen Moore. Hi, Jen. Hi. Thanks a lot for letting us come into Eureka Science Museum. This place is awesome. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> Excited to show you around. Yeah. Do you want to show us some of your favorite things here in the museum? Yeah, I'd love to. Let's go. Awesome. Thanks. What is this? So this here is the Brachiostron, and I ask you, which racetrack do you think is going to hit the bottom first? Oh boy, I bet the kids at home know. I'm not really sure. I'm going to guess that it's this one, but I'm not really sure. Whoa, same. Whoa, it's almost the same, almost right? Almost the same, really close. And. Usually, so the, unfortunately, these balls were different sizes, oh. but when they're the same size and it comes down, this longer track is actually faster because the ball picks up so much momentum as it's coming down. Oh, so the steepness here yeah. helps it go faster? Yes. I have another fun one to show you. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you think's, what do you think's going to happen? when I roll this ball down towards its friends? Well, I feel like I kind of cheated because I read on here that it says magnetic steel ball accelerator. So I know it's gonna have something to do with magnets and I know that a magnet will affect what happens with a steel ball, but I don't know exactly what is gonna happen. All right, let's find out. Woo! <laughs> So with the magnetic acceleration, this first ball, this first ball is a magnet. And so oh. as the ball rolls down, the energy is transferred from ball to ball and that's how it ejected the last ball. <laughs> so what area of science or what kind of science is being demonstrated here in this area? So here we're talking about force force and momentum and kinetic and potential energy and we would say this is all within physics all right but it also has a lot of math so all these exhibits here on this table were made by john mcconnell and oh. he's the founder and john's 90 this year he's still around and actively building exhibits for us it used to be called the john mcconnell science uh, math and science, math and science, science. center yeah yes. when it was at the previous location yes so even though it is called eureka science museum john mcconnell is still a part of it now yes it's the eureka mcconnell science museum oh okay and john's first name is not eureka oh very good to know thank you <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to take a walk through geologic time from a biologic perspective Whoa. Are you ready? We're going to enter 4,500 million years ago. Wow. When life on Earth was very simple. So we started out in the first life just having a lot of cellular simple organisms. And then as the oceans began to develop, there was lots of sponges in the ocean. And then the corals started to develop. And these are different than sponges that you might like wash a car or wash your dishes with. These are sponges that are alive, right? These are live sponges, that's correct. But like this vase sponge right here, and you look at the fibers on it, 
there are sponges from the ocean that we still use for cleaning today. Oh, wow. Yeah. They hold a lot of water. Neat. So now we're moving into the explosion of the oceans. And here you're, we're talking about the Cambrian explosion when all life within the oceans really became, really started to explode. And we have a lot of fishes. But inside each of these tanks, so these are blown blown glass oh, wow. uh, tanks. And that's so that it magnifies for you what you're looking at inside. So these are marine annelids, which are feather dusters, which are these organisms that live inside these tubes. And when they're disturbed, they suck their feather duster back down in the tube. That's neat. So even though it looks more like a plant, that's really a, a An kind or, of- A living organism, a yes. Living creature, yeah. yeah. And in here, we have hermit crabs. And you can Whoa. see one of these hermit crabs, we put in clear glass shells so that the hermit crab will t make its home in this clear glass shell and you can see the inside of its oh, body. That's neat. And about every two or three months, they outgrow their shell. And this crab gets so angry, he explodes his glass shell <laughs> before he goes and finds a new one. Wow. Yeah. We call them the shredder. <laughs> and here we have some clownfish. Everybody loves Nemo. Mm -hmm. And the clownfish host with an anemone. And they have a symbiotic relationship. And so every time you see a clownfish anywhere, there will be an associated anemone with it. OK, over here, we have the endangered fish of the Colorado River. Did you know that there's prehistoric fish that live in the Colorado River? No. Yeah, so we have four fish, four species of the endangered fish. The razorback sucker, the humpback chub, the bony tail, and the pike minnow. And pike minnows could grow up to four or five feet long. Whoa. Yeah, there's a giant one here behind you. Oh my you. goodness. <laughs> and so these fish in here, they are representative of those endangered fish species. So these Ooh. ants here are harvester ants. And so you see them out in Western Colorado making mounds. If you're walking in the desert, you'll see this whole mounds of little rocks that look like that. And that's what harvester ants are. And you can see in the colony here, this is where they lay their eggs and they raise their young. And so if you look really carefully behind the lens, you can see pupae and larvae growing in wow. there. Yeah. Here we learn about eggs and some eggs, organisms lay really tiny eggs, and some eggs lay, or some organisms lay eggs that are really large. Did you know that a platypus egg is smaller than the size of my thumbnail? While a platypus is like this big, and a kiwi bird is like this big, and it, this is the size of its egg. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's really surprising. Yeah. So this is the size of a kiwi bird. Yep. This orange outline. Yeah. That's the and size it, of its it, egg. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And these eggs are laid by a common muir, which are seabirds. And one common muir could have this color egg with this pattern. The next one next door could have this hmm. and the third. And they lay these different colored eggs so that while they're out feeding, they can come back and be able to find the egg based on the pattern of coloring that's on the egg. That is so neat. So these are rats that have always lived with people? Yes. So these rats, Hi. we got them when they were really young. And Hi. we talk about domesticated rats um, versus wild rats, which would be more like a rodent that you would get rid of in your house. But there's also uh, rats that live in the wild called pack rats. Oh, yeah. And rats are actually really curious creatures. <laughs> and so scientists can use them and study them to learn about different mammalian traits and characteristics. Because rats are mammals just like us? They're mammals just like us, and they're actually really quite smart. You can train rats to do things. This exhibit was designed to simulate the Colorado River from the headwaters all the way down to Grand Junction. Wow. And you can play with gates and dams up here and move them to channel the water where you want it to go. But down here, this is a replica of the roller dam that's in Tibet Canyon. And at this location, on the far side of the river, there's a head gate. And this is how we send water to the Grand Valley to irrigate their peaches. 
So oh. without this system, you wouldn't have fresh peaches every summer. Wow. And over here, uh, close to the highway, is a fish ladder. And this fish ladder allows the endangered fish species to move up and down the river past the roller dam. Wait a minute, a fish ladder? A fish do, ladder. Kids, do you think that fish climb up a ladder like a person? It must be a different kind of ladder. It's a different kind <laughs> of ladder. How does a fish ladder work? Yeah, it's like a ramp. And on the ramp, there's these different elements where fish can hide behind because they get tired. It's a lot of swimming. Oh, yeah. So they hide behind these pretend elements like rocks to oh. protect them as they're swimming up. And remember those endangered fish species we saw over there? Mm -hmm. That's what this is for. Neat. Yeah. Oh. So this here is an Archimedes screw. So back in the time the Greeks and the Romans developed this technology to mechanically move water uphill, because it's really hard to move water. So by twisting this screw, look, the water's coming up it and filling the bucket. Wow. So simple. It's simple. Wow. Amazing technology. That is. <laughs> Here we have two sets of lungs, healthy lung and a smoker's lung. And we all know why we should not smoke cigarettes or vape, because it can do, it can turn your lungs black. And so let's see what happens when we try to breathe when we have smoking lungs. Can you see how big the healthy lungs are compared to the smoking lung? almost twice the size. Wow. That's why it's so hard to breathe when we have put tar into, a, into our lungs. So are you ready to come in the, the mine? So this, we talk about hard rock mining in Western Colorado and how children as young as seven and eight were working in the mines. And this is an original miner's hat. So you kids are lucky that you don't have to work in mines today. Homework's not so bad. <laughs> Over here, we have our collection of fluorescent minerals. These are under a shortwave light. And so when the light interacts with the mineral, it excites the mineralogy inside that rock and makes it emit light. So that's shortwave. Under the long wave lights, when you come in here, these, this, it's the same process that's happening, but in this example, you can touch these rocks and be under this light. The short wave light will burn you, but the long wave light is safe. Jen, thanks so much. This place is awesome. You're so welcome. Come again. Absolutely. And kids, come check out Eureka Science Museum sometime. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye. Oh.